I represent homeowners in the war involving foreclosure in this country. These servicers are, well, in fact, the servicers, like we're arguing in your case, cannot, we've got a servicer, you can't be a beneficiary. The two are diametrically opposed. They don't yeah, meet the I bet, I bet when you really get but, to the entrails of this thing, you're going to find out that they are connected. Oh, no, they, yeah. they're, they're totally connected. How are you this afternoon, sir? Very well. It's good to see you, Chris. All right. We're here at KingCast.net, and we're here with uh, Scott Staffney with Staffney and Trumbull, and uh, we're in uh, upstate Washington, and we're here today to discuss uh, part of uh, America's burgeoning or continuing uh, crisis with foreclosure. Now, Mr. Staffney, I understand that you've just recently returned from a CLE conference all the way out in Dallas, Texas. Yes, I did. And can you tell us why you would journey so far for a few uh, legal education credits? Sure. It, um... As a lawyer, all of us have to get continuing legal education credits. Now, the reason I chose to go all the way to Dallas is because I represent homeowners in the war involving foreclosure in this country. This particular continuing legal education was being put on by creditors' lawyers. and. The, the the announcement said uh, they were going to discuss the cutting edge issues, and I wanted to see what they thought the cutting edge issues were. And to your recollection, did they address the cutting edge issues or not? Uh, no, not in my view. Um, in my view, uh, they discussed kind of the sloganeering concepts that they used initially to convince most federal courts to throw homeowners out on their ear. Yeah, and I'm very familiar with the law, having been a closing attorney myself, and I read your notes from the conference, and it seems to me that it's the same old adage, well, you signed something, so therefore we can tell you when to get out. Yeah, it's the same deadbeat debtor uh, argument, which really doesn't address the points that I make when I'm dealing uh, in court on behalf of people who may have signed a document, but uh, they don't have access to it, they don't know who owns it. Um, the whole notion here is uh, courts are supposed to be a place where you can go to have your case heard. And uh, the whole point of the seminar seemed to be um, we want to devise a system where we can have the homeowner, when we tell them to, stand up, walk out into the street with their children, and into the elements. And uh, that seemed to be what they were offering as cutting edge legal theory. Now, I don't think that is cutting-edge legal theory. Well, of, co of course it isn't, and obviously they know that there are problems here. That's why I've seen cases where they have multiple original notes, multiple original mortgages, because we all know that they've been securitized. There are no originals. They've either been destroyed or they're somewhere in a tranche, if they ever made it to the tranche. So, uh, you know, I've seen very real examples where people have been foreclosed on by more than one entity. So it's not a question of a debut homeowner. Maybe they want to pay, but they don't even know who is the accurate... Uh, person to pay. Person to pay, yes. Uh, let me ask you this. I saw in your notes you recounted as a discussion uh, about the rocket docket in Florida and how they just basically shepherd people through and just kick them right out the door. Yeah, what, what they did have one group that consisted of two young attorneys. Uh, I don't know if both were for Florida, but at least one was. And she was complaining about the fact that in Florida... The judges give you five minutes to present your case, whether it's a contested case or not a contested case. And she complained, as well she should, that you should get more than five minutes on a contested case. And obviously she's right. Our whole history of jurisprudence has been 
based on the premise that you get a meaningful day in court. You don't get a meaningful day in court in a five-minute sham trial. And I find it interesting, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Neil Garfield pointed out just two years ago that the Bar Association of Florida came out with recommendations where they specifically stated that it doesn't matter when a lawyer uh, determines that there may be bad documents in a case, they have to provide that information to the court regardless of the, the implications to those bad documents. And I believe there was a professor, Chinaris, down there that was active in that. But I haven't seen any change in Florida, and I monitor these things. Have you seen any change? No, what I have seen are there, there's some Florida attorneys um, that appear to be doing very well on behalf of homeowners and making challenges to standing issues, which are those issues you were talking about when you said you got to know who to pay, right. which means that uh, in a lot of cases, the people who are seeking to foreclose on these people can't prove that they're entitled to the money. Well, that is some progress then. Uh, the last thing I was want to reference here now is there was a statement from another attorney in Washington that you were speaking with, and I think that attorney said something to the effect that uh, we should just kick all these people out, they should want to get out of the house, and that would solve the whole crisis. And I was taken aback at that notion myself, and I didn't know what you thought about that. You know, you have to make a decision in life, and as a society, and, and at some point on behalf of the entire human race, what's going to matter most? Is money going to be the controller of everything? Or are we going to be a nation of laws? In my article, I, I said, you know, just a few decades ago, um, our Supreme Court said that uh, no one, not even presidents, are above the law. And yet, today we have a situation in which our Attorney General has commented that banks and bankers that control them are too big to jail. Well, my view is this notion that banks are too big to fail and the executives who control them are too powerful to jail must go the way of the dinosaur. We need to move on to a new world, and one without uh, banks, or at least these types of banks which try to control everyone and uh, make our world dependent on their wealth. Yeah, and, and wealth that the taxpayers created and the homeowners created by, by virtue of their signature in the first place. And I look at that and I, and I, I, I admire the work you're doing as far as uh, it, trying to impose some neutrality between the trustee and beneficiary. We're following that. And, and, and I guess it's good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks. Indeed.